Welcome to Guangxi. I'm Rachel, an American expat who's been living in China for seven years. I've traveled to over 25 different regions and areas in China, and one of my favorite things to do is solo travel here. Join me on a four-day solo trip to the southern part of Guangxi. scenic area oh my gosh this place is gorgeous it reminds me of Yangshu a lot it's the same kind of karst landscape scenery but it's just oh it's just gorgeous wow ah this is like right outside my hotel incredible so this Mingxue scenic area or Mingxue Tianyuan is an A-level scenic spot in the southern part of the Guangxi Zhuang autonomous region in southwest China No. This little town area has lots of hotels, shops, restaurants, and even a little Vietnamese coffee shop that you can go to. The sun is set. Oh my gosh, look how gorgeous it is. Like pinkish sky. I don't think it comes through even quite the same on the video, but it's beautiful. Then to end my first day in Mingxia, I grabbed some food at a local restaurant, and you can hear these firecrackers going off in the background too. By the way, check out my website where I've listed a full guide to visiting Mingxue and Dotian, including places I've stayed, all the extra details. Link is below. Good morning! I'm on day two in Mingxue and I'm in a taxi headed to the Dotian Falls today. I'm so excited. Um, just a few notes though, it's really difficult to get a car out to the falls. It's like an hour drive from Mingxue scenic area. Uh, so make sure that you either have a car, have some kind of transportation on your own, or ask your hotel to help you book. Because if you're waiting for a DD, nothing came. Um, but luckily my hotel helped me with somebody and uh, I'm on my way. Also, bring your passport because I, we just got stopped at a uh, kind of border control or some kind of just checkpoint. Um, and they asked for my passport, checked out my visa. Everything's fine, but just uh, bring your passport with you. And let's go to the falls. You'll need to buy a ticket at the Dutian Waterfall Tourist Center first. The entrance fee is 80 RMB and the sightseeing bus that you need to get is 35 RMB for a round trip. Got my ticket! It's actually about 10 kilometers away from the waterfall and you need to take an official tour bus up to enter the scenic area. China here, Vietnam over here. There are several things you can actually do in the waterfall scenic area. Number one, of course, is walking around the waterfalls. There are so many pathways that lead around the waterfall for different viewpoints. It's absolutely stunning. Then next, you can also take a boat ride close to the falls for an extra 30 RMB, uh, which I did not do, but it looks amazing. And there's all these little coffee shops around where you could grab a Vietnamese coffee, rest, hang out, look at the views. There were lots of free samples for coffee everywhere too, so of course I had to try some. And then finally, there's this magic carpet conveyor belt that goes up to a glass walk. So if you're not afraid of heights, this is a really fun way to go up the mountain and see a cool scenic area. It costs 68 RMB per person. Fun does not end there. There's some more stairs, and then there is a second magic carpet ride. Woohoo!
walk next to it. Don't walk on it. <laughs> we made it up the magic carpet ride, and we're gonna go explore this glass walk area. After the magic carpet ride, before you get to the glass bridge, there are several sets of stairs you need to go up. And there's these fun gongs along the way that you can knock for encouragement. It was really popular with the kids. And of course, I also had to try this. So just like there's the magic carpet ride up, there's a slide down, but I decided to walk down instead and enjoy some more of the views. Sorry, this is so close to my face, I know. And uh, it's really nice, I'm so glad I did. Actually, there was a line to wait for the slide. And here on this path, there's nobody, so I'm getting more of these great views. One thing I got asked a lot about visiting here is, can you swim in the water? And the answer is definitely no. There's fences all around. There's lots of security to make sure that you're not jumping in the water and crossing over to the other side. So don't try swimming here. So I just exited the scenic park area and I'm walking out back towards the buses and there's like a whole little area here with restaurants and more shops and things. It's been an incredible day though. I've been so happy getting to finally see this waterfall here and the border of Vietnam and China. Uh, I wish I'd had time to do the boat ride, I really do. Uh, but I'm really happy with everything I got to see and do. And I'm exhausted now. <laughs> it's been so much walking and hiking up and down. But and to finish off my day here at the Da Tien waterfall, I've gotten a Vietnamese coffee. It's a perfect little treat and picked me up after a long day of walking and being outside. And now I'm gonna go find my taxi. Yeah. Oh, what a day! Okay, now let me show you the rooftop of the hotel I'm staying at. Okay, so full disclosure, during the night of my second day, I got sick, I was up all night, I don't look great, that's why, um, but I think it was a combination of food I had eaten when I got back from the waterfall, plus being out in the sun, hiking, and dehydration. So it's a good reminder, even if you're an experienced traveler and have been in China for seven years like me, take it easy and give your body rest if you need to. It wasn't fun, but it was nice to have a rest day in Mingxue. So for this third day, there's lots that you could still do. You could go biking, you could go walking around the area, you could even go to a pool there's lots of hotels that have really nice pools around and my hotel had a pool so that's something you can definitely do on your third day okay so today i'm going to be exploring the mingshu scenic area i'm so excited it's right next to my hotel let's go first i'm gonna have a little breakfast at my hotel and then i'm gonna see if they'll help me rent a bike somewhere I was feeling a million times better today and so excited to finally be out biking. There were so many bike paths around the area that were paved in with lots of routes and maps that you could check on. So you honestly could spend the whole day just cycling around seeing what you would find. And you can also make lots of stops, get off your bike, walk around, take photos. It was so beautiful.
And then to end my last full day in the Mingxia area, I went inside the Mingxia scenic area, which is an official spot that you need to actually pay 80 RMB to get into, unless you're staying at the hotel I was staying in, which I'll link down below. It was really, really nice. Lots of photo areas and places to walk around. And they also do shows at night, which is really cool. So it was a great way to end the day. It's so funny, there'll be nobody walking around here, but when the fog comes on, suddenly everybody flocks around. I mean, I can't blame them, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> Hello. Ni hao. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> The next morning, the hotel helped me arrange a car to go back to Nanning Airport and I flew back to Beijing. It was an incredible trip to go to Guangxi. I loved it so much. If you're looking for more details about my itinerary, where I stayed, all the locations, I have linked it in my blog. You can find more information on my website and on Instagram. Thanks for joining me along this adventure to Guangxi.